is Anastasia Henry. I am the executive director of the American Transplant Foundation. Uh, it's uh, such an honor to be the leader of this incredible foundation and do life-saving work every day. Obviously now it's April National Donate Life Month. So it's extra special for us to talk about the miracle of organ donation and daily work that we do to save lives here in Colorado and nationally. Awesome. Can you please uh, tell us what makes your organization special? What makes um, the American Transplant Foundation special? It's my pleasure, Vina. <laughs> it's my favorite question. You know, I think um, what really makes us special is that for us, it's not a matter of numbers. It's not the matter of volume. Like we really get to work with every family, whether we're providing financial support, emotional support, education support, like literally over this weekend, we're talking on the Monday morning, over the weekend, you know, I have patients who just got home uh, from the transplant center and I'm checking on them, like how they're feeling. They just got a new kidney. It's so exciting. So that's what makes us so special is that we have this personal connection to the families that we're working with. And we always say that we provide this end to end transplant support services. And that includes those people who are waiting for transplants, their loved ones, their caregivers, those people who are thinking about donating an organ, people who are receiving transplants, living donors, post-op support. So we have the transplant support and that's what makes us unique, that not only we meet people at certain point of time, like we develop these lifelong relationships. I love that. I feel like that would be such a scary process. So I love the fact that you guys have such close relationships with your patients. Um, okay, let's see. The next question is, how many transplants would you say occur in a year? So for United States, last year, actually, it was the record number, over 40 thousand transplants. So that was highest ever. In Colorado, we didn't have a record number, but it was pretty close. I think it was like second best year ever. Um, so we had 582 transplants last year in Colorado. Wow. Um, so when you say it was like a record breaking number, why is that? Multiple reasons. I think that there will be more formal studies. I think the uh, data scientists, they want to see kind of a trend and then they can uh, really look into it. There are multiple reasons. You know, some things that happen that there have been different organ allocations rules nationally. Also, uh, so many organ procurement organizations, you know, they really try to be more efficient with how they recover organs, how organs have been utilized. So that's also positive. Um, and there are also some negative trends. Like for example, we know that during the pandemic and right afterwards, uh, we had higher number of, you know, certain drug overdoses and such. So uh, I think that it will be really fascinating to see real research right now. This is just kind of like conversational reasons. When we talk about okay. organ donation, we need to differentiate between becoming a registered organ donor when you have a little heart on your driver's license. It's so critical to do. You can do it the DMV. You can do it just, you know, Donate Life and Donate Life Colorado. You can register. Um, so, but your actual chance of becoming an organ donor um, when you die is, you know, three out of a thousand. So it's less than 1%. So it's a small chance, but it's so necessary that we all do it. It's really critical. Um, if you are interested in learning more about how to become a living organ donor, so we definitely like, this is kind of like our area of expertise. And so you can donate safely kidney, uh, donating a liver, a liver is very doable, very possible, is more complex. What I think people don't know that donating a kidney is can be much easier than one might expect. So do you want to guess like how long you're going to be in the hospital after you donate the kidney? Two months? <laughs> Two months? Okay, we have a guess. Okay, okay. mine is, uh, I'm going to guess seven days. Seven days, okay. <laughs> it's like two to four days. 
and then you can go home two to four days and then we have so many donors that you know like maybe like after five six days people start working from home so it's really amazing if you have very very much like kind of physically heavy job physically involved like heavy lifting then yes it will be longer since you can do that yeah um but still you know like three to four weeks like you can get back to your normal physical activities with livers it's longer it's more difficult recovery process uh but still like it's it's amazing you know like not a lot of people realize that um as women we just actually had a volunteer who we work with uh, when she was looking for a kidney transplant and now she received a kidney transplant and she just announced that she's pregnant with a baby boy mm -hmm. so it's beautiful and we have you know transplant recipients who you know expecting and leaving donors both kidney and liver so it's really is amazing and the doctors will do such a great job screening you so if there is any any chance that something might go wrong you know they're very careful obviously nothing is like 100 percent, so there's still complication rate but it's less than one percent uh, and and the doctors really really do an incredible job like screening your health so uh, that's that's a very um, good process i love that thank you for sharing that with us um let's see how are organ uh, recipients uh, selected? So organ recipients, these are the people who are currently on the waiting list, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, nationally, we have 106 thousand Americans who are waiting for a transplant and 1900 of them are kids. And in Colorado, we have less than 1500 which is actually a really good number like yes it's obviously we want that number to be zero but 1500 is less than we had in a very long time mm -hmm. so it's very important like if you have um certain health issues like just to ha get your regular health screens it's so important because you don't want to be in a position when all of a sudden you're in kidney failure, right? You need to understand that, okay, I have a kidney disease and my doctor is aware of it and my medical team knows that and they're monitoring me. So the best thing to do is to really go and do your checkups because we have we have volunteers that have been so good about doing their checkups. They uh, got listed for a kidney transplant and they received a kidney transplant without going on dialysis. Why? Because there was plenty of time. They kind of did everything. Also, it's so critical, you know, when people follow doctor's recommendations and let's say they start exercising, eating better, doing little activities like walking, it makes tremendous difference. And this is what we love to see, you know, when as a result of transplantation, even before people receiving transplant, they just getting healthier. And I think it's such an honor whether you received a kidney from somebody who passed away or just like any organ you received from someone who passed away. And it's an honor that you have that organ that somebody died and you have, right? It's such a responsibility. So we see it very often that people actually making much better health choices because they know that they honor that organ and that life of that donor. If you're a living donor um, and you don't, you know, like you donate a kidney, um, then what happens if you get sick, like you need a kidney later? I mean, I guess I, I think aren't there like a lot of people who might be scared to do something like that because what if they go into renal failure later? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point and thank you so much for bringing it up. So the way that it works that luckily as a living donor, if you ever need a transplant yourself, you will go on top of the list. So it's a very, very important information that kind of gives you that confidence. I have to say that it's incredible that living donors, like they are healthy people to begin with, otherwise doctors will not allow you to donate. But that fact, you know, that like they actually become even healthier after living donation. It's incredible. Like they take such good care of themselves. Like it's very rare, like very rare that there's somebody that will end up needing a kidney. But in case that happens, there is that, you know, guarantee for them. So and then I guess on on the other opposite end of that, how if there is somebody who is a non-living donor, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, is that considered a good option for some people who maybe have been on the waiting list for a long time to get a kidney or something yeah. from something from someone who's non-living? Absolutely. So here is some statistics. I think it's so important to have some stats. So your five-year survival rate, if you're on dialysis, is 35%. If you received a kidney from a diseased donor, your rate five-year survival is 78%. Oh. If you received a kidney from a living donor, your rate, five-year survival rate after you receive a kidney from a living donor, 88%. Oh, wow. So do they say five-year survival rate because that's when they kind of just stop tracking people after yes. five years? So they mm -hmm. may live mm -hmm. longer. Than Absolutely. That. They just... Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. They're like people who own the houses that live, you know, more than 10 years. And, you know, they're definitely, it's just like that okay. kind of like little slice, you know, so it doesn't mean that after five years, you know, the right. game is over, right? So no, definitely not. And then, um, so it's, so I'm so sorry. Oh, go ahead, Alicia. Oh, no, you go. <laughs> So it is 10 years kind of like the gap or something? 10 years? No, not necessarily. No. And it's actually what's amazing is that the statistic that I just gave you, right? Yeah. It's actually um, the life expectancy. It just keeps uh, getting longer and longer, like for child support okay. recipients. Okay. And even with dialysis, you know, there's like improvements now, like the way that, you know, they minimize infections, you know, so it's actually better exp life expectancy, you know, overall, you know, as mm -hmm. like the science, you know, keeps improving. But it's important to know that if you have a choice, like you at least need to try to pursue that option of transplant if you have that opportunity. For some people, let's say kidney failure and they're like in their 80s, you know, probably maybe they're not the best candidate for a transplant. So they ask is their only option and it can be an incredible option for them just to be able to survive. Um, but again, like we need to keep that in perspective. All available options for treatment. Are there age limits on people who want to be a, a living donor? There are age limits and it's not like, okay, the second you turn 65, this is it. No, no, it really depends. Like we know that, you know, some 60 year olds are extremely healthy, right? So uh, I would say, you know, if you're in your seventies, like, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Um, but if you are in good health, if you're active, if you're healthy, like we encourage, you know, even you're like, okay, I'm 55, is it too old? No, it's not too old. Like you can definitely, you know, uh, fill out the form. Nowadays, like it's simple, you know, it's not a rocket science. Like all it takes is that like if you go to potential living donor database, you register, we we'll send you information, you can go fill out the form with the transplant center. Mm -hmm. Believe me, like if they think that you're a candidate, they're going to call you, right? So there's um, no reason. So insurance thing. will, the transplant recipients insurance will mm -hmm. cover the cost of the transplant and if you are a living donor, so they will also cover your costs, like your medical costs, including evaluation costs, which is wonderful, right? So as a living donor, um, so we come in and we help with certain financial expenses, such as lost wages for living donors. So we reimburse uh, lost wages. We have programs for transplant recipients. We have, we started during the pandemic emergency fund uh, for transplant recipients, making sure, uh, because transplant recipients, they need to take anti-rejection medication. So making sure that they have access to medication. So we provide uh, additional financial support. Okay, that's awesome. And uh, so do people, how, how do you guys fund it? Do, you, do people just donate to you? Yes, great question. You know, I wish we were funded by Jeff Bezos, but we are not. <laughs> So, but it's also great, you know, because we don't have that one big pharmaceutical company or government, you know, so we're very, very proud to be an organization that funds patients regardless of their legal status. Mm -hmm. And like, we are very creative. We have uh, so many like different innovative initiatives that we have the freedom to run because we are self-funded. And what I mean by self-funded is that we exist because the generosity of our donors. We have a monthly giving program 
program. It's called Save a Life Society. Where people get beautiful pins and they're so, so proud that they're able to contribute back. They know exactly how their money being spent and who is receiving the grant. We have volunteers. So definitely, you know, we we depend on financial donations. We have some people who donate like five dollars a month, ten dollars a month, and it just combined makes such a big difference. So you can go to Potential Living Donor Database. You can Google Potential Living Donor Database. You can find it on our website. And there you take like a very, fill out a very simple form, answer a few questions, and then you can kind of see you like if you can potentially be a living donor. And then we, we can follow up with you, like our incredible volunteers who are living donors themselves. We will send you some information about the next steps. Like it's it's just information, there's no pressure, but we will kind of like show you, okay, if you're interested to learn more, this is where you go. If you're interested to talk to a transplant center, this is where you call. And then, like I said, again, we have volunteers who are mentors who are incredible we have one mentor that not only he donated a kidney abina he also donated a part of his liver oh my goodness yeah and he's our mentor <laughs> so I, I don't know a lot of people want to do everything you know but like there are some incredible people like that that we're so fortunate to have them on board and they can answer all the questions i think it's so important for us that we provide that support, you know, that like mentorship, like peer to peer. So if you have some unique questions, uh, somebody can just like in a very uh, non-threatening form, you can ask anything and our volunteers will help you and guide you. That's amazing. So can you talk more about volunteering? How do you get involved with volunteering? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we are volunteer driven organization. Our volunteers, they at the core of everything that we do. So if somebody wants to get involved, you don't need to be a living donor, a transplant recipient. Let's say you just want to help with office help. We always have so much going on. So just go on the American Transplant Foundation org click on um, volunteer opportunities and there are lots of things we have an incredible internship program that many of our interns like they they work in dc you know in some huge national organizations we're so proud of them and so many of them they actually stay in healthcare field um so that is also available thank you so much again for your time um do you have any last words that you want to leave um our audience with well i just am so grateful for everybody who has registered already as a registered organ donor and who spent a little time to learn more about living the nation if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Information is on our website, americantransplantfoundation.org.